All right, now to our first conversation. We were talking about uh, bridging Nigeria's uh, infrastructure gap. We've spoken about that a lot on this show and um, was also talking about the prospects for tunneling and making use of Nigeria's underground uh, space. Let's see how far the government is adopting this technology. Now joining us is uh, Dr. Uh, Elena uh, Kiroti, a managing director in ground consulting and strategy in France, and Abidemi Agua, president, Nigerian Tunneling Association. Great to have you both. Uh, on the show today. Thank you for hosting us. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. For All right. Much, yeah. So I'm going to start with you, um, Abidemi, at this point. I'm going to put up a slide now. We see Nigeria's uh, public debt stock in the first quarter of 2024 were at over 120 trillion naira from 97 trillion in the fourth quarter of 2023. And you know, we've been talking about you know on the ground infrastructure at this Absolutely. time, and we've racked up all this debt, you know, up till now. And I'm wondering, uh, give me um, an estimate of how much of this money would have been able to work out the whole uh, underground infrastructure in Nigeria as a whole. How much of that money would have been used for this? So um, thank you very much um, for that question. Right. So in terms of infrastructure, there's no silver bullet. And um, I would like to um, paint to you a global picture um, just to, to give you a wider context of um, how that money would have been relevant in terms of the integration of underground spaces. So in uh, 2019 and 2023, the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association published two market surveys. Um, two of those, the two surveys show that there was an increase by 10% from 120 trillion and billion euros to 170 billion euros over um, a period of three years. Um, I'm comparing, I'm comparing I'm comparison over three years. And um, obviously, that translated to 6,600 kilometers of tunnel constructed globally between 2020 and 2022. Um, 2022 accounted for 7,500 kilometers of tunnel. So you can understand that COVID had a significant role to play in this regard. So the global market, um, in terms of tunneling and underground space use, uh, where civil engineering, actually captures 20% of that market, um, of the global construction market, which, is, um, which sits at 2.2 trillion um, euros, actually um, stands at 2.2 trillion euros, actually stands at um, where 7% of that market is attributed to tunneling. And so we can then extrapolate from these how much impact that would have had um, on the tunneling market. But to 121 trillion. Trillion, under 21 trillion. How much of that would have built so all the underground that, that, infrastructure? So, so you can see that the global um, construction market or the global civil engineering market is a hundred um, was um, basically attributed to 2.2 trillion euros. 2.2 2 trillion, trillion euros, euros. Okay. and so you can you can basically extrapolate yeah, we can how, the, how much we can do the exchange do, rate do, do at this point. Exchange rate. So, uh, but then bringing it down to GDP. Okay, so the global um, GDP. Um, tunneling actually captures 1.6% of the global GDP for tunneling and underground space construction. And if we give an example of China, where um, the GDP in China, tunneling captures 5.2% of that. And in Africa, we have just 0.2% of the global market, where, of the market where tunneling captures um, um, just 0.2% of the market in, 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 um, in Africa. So we can see um, that the, the, from the global context, how much of that um, uh, finance would have uh, made a lot of driven? Of, of course, we, we can we can attribute it to uh, the fact that there are different factors that probably would have influenced that. You can talk about inflation and, and all the other right. um, financial factors that would, would address um, that would have um, attributed them that would have um, enabled or cost that. Right. And maybe right. even uh, even if it is a small percentage, but it's maybe useful to stress out that right. in the small percentage there is a, a big strategic problem a project for Europe and Africa that is the connection of the two continents to the through the tunnel of Gibraltar, and uh, and this is worth to mention because it's one of the most challenging projects that the professional will face in these markets and. Uh, Africa will play an important role in, in that one. Right. I was going to come to you, um, Elena, but, you know, definitely um, looking at uh, the way Nigeria is set up, you know, at this time, we've not, we're not done with our overground um, infrastructure, you know, at this time. But talk to me about the importance right now 
of developing underground infrastructure for a country like Nigeria, you know, at this time? Well, as a, as a professional, I worked uh, all around the world uh, in the last uh, almost 30 years. And uh, everywhere there is a, a growing uh, economy, there is a growing demand for the use of the underground space. Uh, because the cities are, uh, uh, are increasing and uh, the data with the uh, uh, epidemic is, is, more, uh, uh, is more familiar with the, with the data from, from Nigeria. Well, the population is rising fast. If, if, I, if, I, fast, if, I, if, I, if I just um, add to that, so of course we, we talk about the urbanization rate in Africa, which right. is currently at 45%. Population in the next 20, 20 years estimates that one in four people in the world will be an African. And you're looking at the footprint of a city like Lagos, where we have 24 million people. That is rising. Uh, without any significant increase in the footprint of the city, how do we then manage um, the, um, the infrastructural deficit that we have in terms of the spatial challenges we have in the city? Underground speed has to come into, into play here for water, for sewage, for multimodal transportation. Um, and, you know, you talked about how Nigeria um, is really, I actually say Nigeria is long overdue um, as a result of that because um, you look at the opportunities that we stand to benefit from land value capture by creation of transit-oriented development, creating multimodality in terms of transportation nodes. Um, Lagos State Government is already doing um, that in some ways, where you have intersections, where you have the water interface and water transportation interfacing with rail, interfacing with, with bus rapid transport. But adding another layer of um, metro transportation to that in a metropolitan city, um, as Lagos will take the socioeconomic indicators or factors of the city to another level. So I would say um, that Lagos State is, and, and as a matter of fact, Nigeria as a whole is um, overdue the integration of tunneling and underground Nigeria space. Nigeria is ready also because uh, Nigeria is a part of the, um, the, the, the countries that are interested by a new huge uh, transfer, tra transportation project that is the uh, Abidjan Lagos uh, uh, superhighway uh, with the client, where the client is uh, ECOWAS, uh, and uh, in which uh, the client uh, is uh, already pushing the designers to think about the underground solutions. For example, in Ghana, for the bypass of the capital city of Kakra, uh, there are thoughts, real thoughts, about the possibility to go underground and to save important, uh, uh, important land for other uses in urban spaces. So I would say that Nigeria is, is ready, and Nigeria is already collaborating in programs in which the use of underground space uh, in Africa for infrastructure is, uh, right. is, is pushed. Well, I guess investment is one thing, but um, working on this um, underground projects, I, I believe that's another. And um, I'm wondering how much disruption you know, this would bring to the built environment, you know, at this time, because we're still dealing with, you know, traffic gridlocks and uh, major cities having just one way in, one way out, you know, at this point. So how much disruption do you think this would bring if we actually start developing this right now? Well, I, I, would, I wouldn't say it would bring about disruption. I would say it would be an enabler for us to have a more resilient and a more well set out spatial fabric in the city. Because uh, what tunneling and underground space does is it gives you the opportunity to integrate. Because I'm talking about while the constructions are ongoing, let's say we start you know, going full on into the underground space at this point. I'm wondering, th this might bring some kind of disruption you know, to the built environment. From, from, a, from a professional point of view, and um, um, Dr. Elena would um, also corroborate with uh, that, and, and that it's he actually, um, he, he, in, 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 it gives you more flexibility in terms of construction, in terms of um, how you construct compared to what is happening on the surface, because the footprint of impact is significantly smaller than constructing on the surface. What you need to do is to have the, ensure that you have all the engineering protocols in place to manage whatever interface you have. But that is the reason we go underground. It's less disruptive, more flexible, and in the long term, it gives you more socioeconomic value because of the lifespan of the infrastructure itself, which is deemed to be generally over so 100 years. there's not much years. pain while construction, you know, is, on, is ongoing, you know, underground to the surface. Less pain than construction on the surface, definitely. And this is all 
all the, uh, th this is very interesting, the question that you ask, because it will be a question that, uh, having seen a few uh, major uh, public clients, uh, is a recurrent question. What about disruption? What about risks? How we manage that? And uh, us, as an international tunneling association, we have uh, this, uh, this task with the member nations to, to grow the awareness of decision makers on how nowadays um, in, a, in a other countries, in other contexts, uh, the technology has been developed so that uh, we are nowadays able to control all these kind of disruptions and to program for that and to, uh, and to take them into account and to find technical solutions for that. Sure. So the risk should not be and the disruption should not be any, uh, any, anywhere a, a parameter for decision. Okay. All right. I'm sure you've been around Africa. Talk to me about what countries you'd say are leading now when it comes to underground infrastructure. Well, I uh, I would say there are uh, there are different kind of infrastructures uh, that they are using underground. Uh, Abidemi was mentioning the hydropower. We can we cannot forget the the mine industry. The mines are uh, a sister uh, activity where the underground is used uh, with different factor of safety, different construction method, but definitely there is a, a know-how there that is hidden by the statistics that uh, Abidemi was mentioning at the beginning that are on only uh, dealing with the infrastructure world. So I would say there is already a background in uh, hydro and in, uh, and in mines. And then there are uh, um, African countries that are appearing as member nations nowadays in the uh, International Tunneling Association. So maybe you want to know what the International Tunneling Association is. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a, an association that dates back uh, in 1974. So uh, this year we celebrated the 50th anniversary in Shenzhen in, uh, uh, in China. We were both there. 50 years. Uh, 50 years of existence of this organization that is a non-governmental, non-profit organization with almost 80 member nations. That's uh, uh, in where professionals from all the world collaborate to exchange about underground projects, to exchange about technology, to consolidate the best practice, to write recommendations that go back to the uh, member nations uh, as, a, as a guideline and to, uh, uh, to, 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 to make the, 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 to grow the, the awareness about, uh, about the underground space. And back in 2000, um, within the ITA, um, there was this. Uh, the, the, there was a, a committee that was created. That is the ITASET. That is the Committee for Education and Training, because the profession is feeling that there is a gap especially in member nations that are coming from growing countries for uh, educate people to underground space. And so these, uh, um, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these training programs, uh, they are built together with the, the member nations uh, to, uh, to, to address uh, the underground space according to the needs uh, with, tailored, uh, with right. tailored uh, trainings. Right. To, to just quickly add to that, so obviously there's a Nigerian Tunnel Association, as we've, we've mentioned here previously right. on the program, and, and, and we basically um, approach this strategic development with three pillars. So the pillar of awareness, education and capacity development, well, and we approach that from a top-down, um, bottom-up approach where we uh, speak to decision makers in terms of what you talked about, in terms of um, knowledge and awareness from a okay. decision-making point of view. And, uh, and it's, it's all about education, creating awareness and capacity development. And we're doing that also um, by um, interfacing with um, the academia and also the private sector. Quite interesting. Well, I, at some point, I'd, I'd really love to use um, underground spaces at some point, you know, in Nigeria. We'll keep watching and see how the government, you know, puts um, funds um, towards that. It was great having this conversation with you both. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Elena uh, Kirit, uh, Managing Director, In-Ground Consulting and Strategy, and uh, Bidemi um, Agwa, President, Nigerian Tunneling Association. Thank, thank you, you very much, Larry. so much thank for coming on today. Thank you Thank you. All right, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll head straight to the markets. That's in a moment. Just stay with us.